Good day and welcome back. Today I want to talk a little bit about something that I talked about in my last video. I brought up the subject of tack aversion. And I started thinking about that. I haven't talked about that in quite a few years, so I thought I would elaborate a little on that subject because it's actually a fairly common problem. And it's pretty easy to create. Well, not terribly hard to fix, but if left unchecked, it can be really annoying and very inconvenient cause you all kinds of problems, aggravation, frustration, call it what you want, not a good thing. But I want to talk about what it is and a couple of the causes of it, the common ones. And some of the common ones, are, well, basically the tack aversion is when that horse, I should start with how horses think. They don't think in words and sentences like we do. They think in pictures, images. And they would connect the image of the saddle or the bridle or the halt or whatever with something, an emotion that is either positive or negative. And quite often the problem arises when it's connecting that image with a negative emotion. And depending on what is causing the problem, uh, that could be fear, uh, confusion, discomfort. Um, it, it could be a lot of different things. There's a lot of things that could happen. And somebody mentioned in my last video in the comments, uh, they said, hey, what about saddle fit? Is that saddle uncomfortable? Well, there's another one I didn't even mention, but yes, I actually did check, and the saddle does fit them quite well. But that's another one that can cause tack aversion, is if you have tack that causes discomfort to the horse, it sees that saddle, and automatically the image of that saddle is connected with the emotion of pain, that physical sensation. You know, that, that's how their head works. And uh, depending on how you do things, you know, the, the problem could be with the fit of it, how tight you tighten, and maybe you over-tighten the thing and it's darn uncomfortable. Um, maybe it has to do with the bridle. Maybe that bit's a little too harsh and it hurts just being in the mouth because that can happen. Uh, people like to think that bits just cause pressure. No, I'm afraid they can actually cause pain. There's no two ways about that. There's been plenty of studies done on the subject. I'm not even going to go into that one. The halter itself. Now, this is one that I see a lot too. And it's got to do with, it's a little more than just tack aversion. It's actually uh, got to do with catching the horse as well. Because quite often what happens with the halter is the horse will see you coming with the lead and halter and they're gone. And I can think of a specific instance where uh, another place I was at had a fairly large pasture here. And the lady would go out to catch her horse and sees that horse saw her coming with the halter and lead, he was gone. And then it was about 60 acre pasture. And, well, she didn't feel like trodding around. It was pretty rough ground out there and she didn't feel like going through that stuff to go get the horse. So you know, she didn't go very far before she'd give up, go back to the tack room and throw the halter back in the shed and forget about it. That was the end of it. No riding that day. Now that problem, wasn't actually, the horse wasn't really having, oh, it slid off on me. Uh, the horse wasn't really having an aversion to it in the sense that, you know, it was experiencing something negative in connection with it. That was a little bit different situation there, is uh, basically they taught that horse to be hard to catch. I have a saying that when you go out to catch a horse, you don't come back without a horse. That way the horse never learns that if it's difficult long enough, you're going to give up and go away and put that halter and lead back. And it's not going to get ridden or put to work that day. Well, that's what was happening. And it happens a lot. Uh, if you're in a particular place where uh, trotting around the pasture can be difficult, that's why, uh, depending on the weather, I have a pair of rubber boots in my car at all times when I come out here. And if the weather dictates, I put them on because I'm not coming back without a horse. If I go out there to get a horse, I don't care if it's muddy or wet or whatever. Uh, if I go out there to get the horse, uh, I don't want it to learn that all it has to do is get on the other side of that mud and 
game over for me. That's one of the things that it's very similar to tack aversion. They see the thing, they connect it with being put to work, being ridden, and they say, I don't want nothing to do with that. Forget it. So it, it's very similar. It is a form of tack aversion. Um, it's a little bit different than some, but not a lot. You still end results the same. They see the tack, you got a problem on your hands. So that's uh, one form. The other one is the saddle itself. Uh, I don't have a bridle in here with me because uh, well, I, I ride in the halter, so I don't have one handy. But the saddle itself um, might be a problem for a couple of reasons, similar to the uh, halter. If it sees it, thinks it's going to get put to work, it might simply learn that if it gives you a hard time long enough, you'll give up and not try putting the thing on. Um, sometimes it's as simple as that. Sometimes it's a little bit more complicated. Sometimes, uh, uh, particularly in early stages of training, um, you're exposing the horse to a lot of new things, and uh, it's a little stressful and confusing, maybe a tiny bit fearful. And what ends up happening is the horse sees that saddle. It relates that to the fear it feels when it gets put on and gets ridden. And so it doesn't want anything to do with that saddle because that saddle means fear and confusion, things like that. Um, <clears throat> poor fitting saddle could mean pain. And the horse is going to try and avoid it because of discomfort. If uh, having that thing on means pain, um, it's going to say, I don't want you putting that thing on. And a lot of people don't recognize that problem, and they will continue to try and put the saddle on anyhow. Sometimes they're successful too, but uh, doesn't get rid of the actual underlying problem of why the horse has an issue with it. Well, the issue in that case is saddle doesn't fit right. Common problem again, one of many. Um, just generally how you treat the horse while you're riding it can cause anxiety and confusion and stress that, and you know, if you're a little heavy handed on the reins, maybe you're hurting its mouth. Maybe you're using spurs and kicking kind of hard with those things or hurting the horse on the side. And so when it sees that saddle or the bridle, it automatically associates those things with the pain you cause when you're riding it or just the stress or the confusion. Any of those things can cause tack aversion. Another one that's quite common too is uh, a lot of people, because of their schedules, they don't get to see their horse all that often. Uh, especially if they don't live where the horse is kept. They might only make it out to the barn once a week to go riding. And, well, unfortunately, that creates a bit of a problem in the tack aversion department because the only time that horse ever sees you, you stick a saddle on it. Well, it isn't long and that horse sees you coming, and, and, well, you become the tack aversion because it sees you, and the next thing you know, it sees the saddle, and it's like, oh crap, I'm going to get put to work again. And some people ride pretty long and hard uh, when they get the chance to ride. And, you know, well, that's not such a bad thing. But uh, one of the ways you can prevent that is don't always ride the horse. And I know people are thinking, you know, hey, I only got one day a week. Well, you know what? It's not going to hurt if you only ride the horse every second week. Because I have discovered over the years that I can get a great deal of pleasure from my horses without ever riding them. You don't have to get on and go for a ride. You know, you'll have peer pressure saying, oh, come on, what's the matter with you? Why aren't you riding with us when there's other people at the barn that want to go for a ride? It's like, well, that's your problem. Go for a ride if you want. You don't need me to hold your hand, do you? So don't let that kind of thing intimidate you into riding when you probably shouldn't. Uh, one of the things I like to do to help prevent tack aversion and uh, is, well, sometimes I'll put it on the horse and not ride the horse. Sometimes I'll just put it on and take it off. Sometimes I'll leave it on for a while. Sometimes I won't even put it on, but I'll make sure the horse can see it. It'll sit here on the stand or uh, if you're outside, it'll be sitting on a fence somewhere right beside where the horse is. So the horse doesn't automatically connect that saddle with being put to work, being ridden. You know, anything that possibly if it's a constant thing, is going to start developing this negative connotation to the saddle when it sees it. Or me. I want, certainly don't want that. 
I want the horse to be happy to see me. I don't want the horse to see me and think, oh, crap, here he comes. He's going to put me to work again. Well, that happens, and that can cause attack aversion. In fact, it can also make your horse hard to catch, too, if the only thing you ever do when you see your horse is ride it. So uh, I just thought I'd uh, delve into that a little bit more. Some of the things that can happen uh, as far as why the horse might not like tack, because it connects a visual image with a physical feeling, uh, an emotion, whether it's stress, anxiety, pain, discomforts, you know, anything. You know, there's a lot of different negative things that horse can be feeling that it ends up connecting with the saddle, the halter, the bridle, uh, any of that stuff. Uh, if you, you know, and that's one of the reasons, uh, uh, and it's very sim similar. Uh, I'll, I'll connect one other thing too, it because uh, the process is similar. Is farriers occasionally, not too often, but occasionally I've seen and I've seen it happen more than once. Uh, will hit horses with the tools, the rasp or the nippers or something like that when it acts up a bit. And well, the problem with that is, just like with the tack aversion, it sees that particular thing when the next farrier comes along that who treats the horse very good. And the minute they see that tool in their hand, they relate the image of that tool with the pain of being hit. And forget it, I want nothing to do with you. You got those things you're going to hit me with. At least that's what the horse is thinking because it doesn't have the lo logical uh, rationalization that the human has. They see something, the image of this item, they connect that to being hit or confusion or some kind of stress and they don't want anything to do with it or possibly the person that has it which in the case of you know the person that only rides the horse once a week if every time you show up you got the halter you got the bridle you got the saddle next thing you know the horse is hard to catch doesn't want anything to do with you doesn't want anything to do with any of the tack well there you go that's tack aversion that's how it works and it can happen not just with your tack that you use on the horse but other things I'll give you another quick example here, since one's handy. The lunge whip. Now, if I was to frequently hit the horse with it, uh, do things that scared the horse and intimidated the horse, next thing you know, if that horse saw this thing, it'd say, uh-uh, I'm out of here. And it'd be at the other end of the arena or the other end of the pasture or wherever. Because this thing is, the image of this creates a negative emotion. Uh, fear, confusion, stress, pain. You know, whatever, depending on what you do with it. You know, and that's what happens. So that's another uh, ver another case of, it's a very similar thing. The tack aversion, it's an image, is connected to an emotion that is either positive or negative. And if every time you see the horse, when you show up with that halter or the bridle or the saddle, you treat it nice, say soft, gentle words, give it a gentle stroke, Things like that, if you're, it's always a positive experience for the horse, you're never going to have a problem. But it's one of those things that, you know, <clears throat> accidentally, it's very easy to create a problem. Like I said, if you only ride the horse once a week and you do it every single time you see that horse, well, you're probably going to create the problem. If you go to catch the horse and you decide, nah, too much work, give up, go back, you're creating a problem because you're teaching that horse that if it's difficult to be caught, you know, it won't get caught. Um, even putting the saddle on or putting the bridle on, if the horse is resistant, you give up. Well, you're just reinforcing the problem. So I just thought I'd explain a little bit more how tack aversion works and you know some of the things that you can do to help prevent it from ever happening is, like I say, when you go to get a horse, don't come back without a horse. Uh, make sure your saddle fits good. Treat the horse good at all times when you're using any kind of tack or tools or anything. And when the horse sees those items, it's not going to automatically connect them with a negative emotion. Okay, so there you go. A little bit on tack aversion. A uh, very common problem. Easy to create. Not too hard to fix, but left unchecked, it can be a serious issue. Have a good day.